I think it is important for us to do some fair level of critical thinking with respect to this discourse. The subject matter was a case study of Plateau and Kaduna State. And Kaduna State, especially southern part of Kaduna. We mo I, I believe we need to think deeper and ask ourselves what makes this scenario so peculiar and more devastating? A corollary to that is the Benue Valley, which consists of largely Benue State. The intensity of banditry and local terrorism there is inexplicable. Coming back to our subject matter, this is not social. It is what we created, the social media, whatever they call them, they amplifies. They are not commenting on inexistent situations. They are amplifying real life, real time situations. Why is it so? But not correctly. Not correctly. Look, if yeah, you create places. negativity, <laughs> the amplification will always go in the way it is so created. Okay. We need, as Nigerian national, we need to ask ourselves, why is it that this axis has serious proclivity to attacks, banditry, and communal disorganization? It goes beyond lack of social cohesion. Is there any society that is uh, assuredly very cohesive? Why is it that some states in Nigeria even in the northern axis, seems not to have a prevalence of this kind of thing we are discussing. Jigawa like Jigawa Kano. I don't know having rural communities there. I don't know having farmers there. I don't know having peasants there. I don't know having unemployment there. We need to do critical thinking, as they normally teach us in National Defense College. Why is it so? To me, as Nigerian nationals, if we fail to analyze the real cause, but to continue to discuss the effects, we make ourselves the laughing stock. Like the plateau. There's another robust part of Nigeria that has the same climatic condition, like Plateau State, Gembu region, having our boundary with the Cameroon. The same climatic condition, the same vegetation, the same attraction. Mm. But the kind of calamitous situation we are witnessing on the plateau the one of plateau state does not exist there why is it so if it is grazing luxurious grazeland don't we have it in game are we having this kind of community annihilation there to me we need to think deeper even this part of kaduna that we're talking about why is that the areas of kaduna that is so infested falls within the, the microlingual communities. Why is it so? Why is it so? These communities have been there, predated us. Of course, like I said in my opening remark, some of these communities we still have uh, historical dis distortions. Mm -hmm. There are communities that have been liable to invasion in many ways in the time past. And the carry over from that is part of what we are going to call witnessing. So, to me, we need to do more than we are saying. We see unemployment. Is the rate of unemployment in Southern Kaduna or Plateau, is it higher than Jigawa? Is the rate of illiteracy in rural Plateau or rural Southern Kaduna, is it higher than Jigawa? Why are we not having rural bandit today? I leave that one for researchers and security um, uh, and uh, security um, experts, uh, experts <laughs> of whatever persuasion to look into this nexus. We have to save Nigeria. We can't be talking in academic flavor and we believe that this problem will be solved. Mm -hmm. It goes much more than that. All right, AIG. I have not finished, madam. Permit me to take it slowly. Okay. Because these are sensitive national issues. 
Look, no co these communities have not broken down. They are there. They are micro communities, having rulership, having kingship, but we not allow them to be. And how? Why should a whole community be obliterated? Three hundred people killed. What is the definition of war? If somebody levying war against your country, imply carrying arms, attacking community, killing people in large number, what do that for the definition of war? It's not uh, setting up tax forces to do security. To me, what is on the ground is a very ripe scenario for full declaration of war. And we have war experts who, if you give them direct order, written, provided, and with a mandate and a timeline to do the needful. We have war experts trained and maintained by the Federal Republic. Tell them to do the needful time frame. Because I believe that if you carry arms against part of the society or the country, you kill people in mass yeah, and mass. I mean, there's no that definition of war. Go to the dictionary definition. War is carrying arms, organizing arms. And killing people, killing property. We cannot sit down and be talking about uh, social cohesion. We need to respond in the same way these people are levying war on the Federal Republic. It's not the function of the locals or the function of the traditional ruler to respond to war situation. What is happening is affecting our statehood. Our statehood. Let me tell you, my, my sister, we are not the only multilingual group. Go to our neighbors, strategic neighbors here, Cameroon. Northwest of Cameroon is the northeast of Nigeria. The rural community is there. Are they undergoing through what we are going through? Basically, the way we combat uh, war is diff will be different from the way we fight insurgency. What I'm telling you is that we say we have experts who manage this war. In my thinking, let us give them authority to levy war. They know the instrument, the apparatus, the team, the mode to apply in each case. So are you saying our security uh, agencies do not have the capacity to that handle the situation? That is not what situation? I'm saying. I'm saying that people are, to, in my thinking, these people are levying war the Federation. Hmm. And they, what they are doing is threatening our statehood. So why do Therefore, you... we need to apply statecraft. Listen to my English, madam. Applying statecraft means many things. Hmm. Applying statecraft. Statecraft has to be applied. Excuse me. It's not talking about traditional ruler, community boys, community girls. But, <coughs> excuse me. People are levying war against our country. And a good number of them are assisted by foreign elements. In the course of my police in Nigeria, I have arrested many suspects who were found with arms disorganizing local community and who are unable to even speak our local languages. Who told me, direct interview, that they came from somewhere and they came and merged with their local compradors and they begin to torment the local community wherever they are. And that was why there was a time in this country that one of our political leadership who directed us that if we come across anybody, we take a 47 in the bush or wherever, who is not a state actor, we should, we should bring him down. These are the kind of responses that are necessary. Some of these people we are talking about are not our nationals. They come and incubate with the local collaborators and they mindlessly kill our people, disorganize our society, and make our life unbearable. Of course, we are not the only one. Go to Ghana. Go to Cameroon, rural communities are bound as we are. If you say foreigners are involved in this act, how come we, we as a people, the Nigerian nation, I'm talking about from the federal government to the state level, and also security agencies, have not been able to curtail this if there's no partnership with Nigerians? That is why I say apply statecraft. Statecraft means instrument of power of the state, instrument of power of the federal republic. Dr. Amin, uh, am I communicating? Yep, yep. Applying statecraft <laughs> means whatever strategic and national element that is necessary to preserve the Federation of Nigeria must be invoked. Okay, doctor. which of course includes military, diplomacy, intelligence, 
any machinery available to the state, when your state is at war, everything is coming to it, and it will be headed by the military. Okay. In this team, it's not it's not as simplistic as mm. some commentators used to talk about. Oh. Mm. It's a determined and organized criminality to bring Nigeria to its knee. Okay. Thank you. And it's persistent.